Hey everybody, what's up? It's Phil from Zade Comics. I am the co-creator and writer of Magic Cop, a graphic novel we're launching next month, August 2019, and I am just one half of the two best-looking brothers in all of comics. And today, we're coming at you with a, a controversial topic here, getting into uh, uh, some comic book talk and movie talk with my gal Scar Jo. Scarlett Johansson recently came out uh, in an interview talking about some of her films and the controversial roles she picks and how she feels about it. Uh, and I kind of wanted to uh, compare that to some comics and uh, how writing comics, writing characters, and portraying characters kind of correlate uh, a little bit wanted to throw that to all you guys so let's get right into it switch over here so scarjo talking about her movies um i actually saw some a really cool movie that they talk about in here under the skin i watched this this past weekend pretty cool if you guys haven't checked it out really interesting uh the the cinematic way that i mean you'll know what i'm talking about if you see it it's it's freaky but it was very enjoyable, uh, but she's talking about the controversy be, be behind um, who she's portraying. Of course, everyone loves her as Black Widow in the Avengers films, but she was in that Ghost in the Shell movie, which I did not see. I'm not a huge anime fan. Um, I heard it wasn't that good. Some people liked it though, uh, but people there was a huge controversy about her being cast as this anime character, this manga character. From Ghost in the Shell, and uh, and and yeah, I know nothing about the the, the the movie, the anime, but I do know I have um, a Japanese friend that is a big fan of the anime, and uh, well, I don't. I, I have a friend, uh, a Brazilian friend that has a Japanese friend, so it's a friend of a friend that enjoys the anime, um, and the Brazilian friend asked the Japanese friend what they thought of this this whole uproar about Scarlett Johansson playing this this character from Ghost in the Shell and the Japanese friend uh, said isn't that character white in the anime so so the perception in uh, culturally is kind of weird uh, seemingly the uh, us here in America are in this big uproar about Scarlett playing this character but uh, to my knowledge, in Japan, they they think that this character is Caucasian. I don't know. I'm not. I mean, anime freaks me out. You know, I'm a huge. Um, I talk about anime, and it's you know, I get get shivers on my back. It's it's not for me. I'm a huge comic fan. You know, I respect the medium for people that like it. Sometimes I'll rag on it. But just, you know, So she also talks about this movie that she was going to, it was like a biopic, she was going to portray a transmasculine male as we see right here in the film Rub and Tub. It seems like she withdrew from it. And basically this, this part of the interview, she's saying that she wants to be able to portray any character. She's an actress, she's an actor, and she should be able to portray any character that someone hires her to portray. I mean, that's kind of the the definition of an actor, right? You're acting as someone as you are not, and you're convincing an audience that you are that, that character. Um, and a lot of people got pissed off about this. You can't, you shouldn't, all that stuff. And... Uh, and I mean, actors have been doing this forever. Literally, you're you're portraying someone you're not, someone you've never met. Most of the times, some most of the times they're fictitious. They're not even real. And uh, everyone got pissed off about this. I mean, no one made a stink when Jake Gyllenhaal, you know, portrayed a a gay cowboy in Brokeback Mountain. That is what actors do, uh, even if it's uncomfortable for them. They get in that mindset. They embody that character. And the method actors like, like Mickey Rourke, the guy, they get down into it. They become. They embody that character. Uh, and and yeah. So here's a tweet. Uh, when trans people are allowed to play any person, when 
uh, predominant roles stop being whitewashed, then Scarlet can have a moan. Well, sir, or madam, I show you exi exi ex exhibit A. Uh, this right here, a character named Jericho from DC Comics. Uh, this is an article talking about Titans, uh, the big show at the DC Universe Network streaming service that you could, uh, you know, subscribe to. Titans did a pretty good first season, and they're coming back for a season two, uh, which a Swamp Thing should be coming back for a season two, you know what I'm saying? But uh, the character Jericho, uh, if you're not familiar with that character, he is the son of... Deathstroke. Maybe you'll be, you know, more familiar with him. He's been in Batman video games, he's been in a lot of, you know, uh, animated series, stuff like that. So Deathstroke's son, Jericho, is a gay character. He's going to be in the second season of Titans, and cast as this character is an actor by the name of Chala Man. Now, if you guys don't know who Chala Man is, I did not know who Chala Man was. But when this uh, news broke, um, I learned that Chala Man is a deaf trans man uh, who's uh, both Chinese and Jewish. So, I mean, that's if, if they want more diversity, I don't know if we give it to them. But Chala Man is a trans man playing a gay man uh, on this show. So all of ScarJo's haters should be happy that there is a role out there um, and it is being played by a trans man a uh, member of the LGBT community for Titans season two so I think Scarlet can moan a little bit and I wanted to talk about this because I wanted to compare it to um, me being a writer and writing comics and comic book characters and stuff like that but if you guys didn't know I am an actor. I am a thespian, just as Scarlett Johansson. In high school, I portrayed the wizard from The Wizard of Oz. Yeah, that's right. Um, even before that, I was when I was a child, I played one of the members of the Lollipop Guild in The Wizard of Oz. Now, who, I ask you, has been in The Wizard of Oz twice, and been the smallest member and the biggest member. That's me right here. In fact, I still have the hat that Brandon, my brother, made to portray Professor Marvel and the wizard. Um, insert picture of me in high school wearing the same hat. Uh, I, I'm a thespian. I am a 100% thespian through and through. I have the certificate, I think. Um, I did go through, this This mem is ingrained in my memory, I did went through the weird cultish um, ceremony on the stage of my high school where we each had candles and we lit the candles and I don't know if I'm a thespian or I sold my soul to the devil. One of the two. But that happened. So I know a thing or two about acting, and I think actors, since it's in the word, since before, you know, Shakespeare, actors have portrayed characters that they are not. And I think it's a way to put yourself into another culture's shoes, in other people's shoes, in new character's shoes. Um, I, when I was in high school, I was not a 70-year-old uh, balding man with with white hair uh, but I did portray one Professor Marvel yes and it was a fun time uh, but I want to want to you know compare this situation the story to storytelling um, as writers because writers uh, kind of get a little flack about uh, from this also um, in recent times writers you know, not being of the cultural background of their characters, and this has gone on forever since, you know, before, uh, you know, the problem one that sticks out to me is Stan Lee when he was writing uh, The Falcon, one of the first African-American superheroes. Um, Jack Kirby, when he was, you know, portraying or drawing or creating Black Panther. And uh, even, you know, Luke Cage, 
who was super popular on the next on his Netflix series in the Defenders, the Power Man, um, a very prominent uh, black comic book character. He was not created by African Americans. So, you, as writers, we learn to step outside of ourselves, out of our cultural backgrounds, and into other cultural backgrounds to tell stories that we want to tell um, that hopefully connect with that background and everyone else because we're trying to write stories that uh, connect with everybody and not a specific type of person um, of any belief but you know putting those characters in there because we have a story to tell with them and I've felt kind of a backlash even just talking to my friends people I know uh, about characters that I'm excited about, that I've created, that I've written scripts for, that I'm actually working on currently, um, that I, you know, can't specifically identify with their cultural background, um, their gender, and and they say, oh, you better be careful. You know, you don't want to make anyone mad. Uh, you better do your research. And it's kind of discouraging um, hearing that. And I want to tell them, like, oh, you know, listen to this. This is really cool about this character. I have this story that I'm really excited about. And they, uh, they're, they you know, kind of jarred by it. And then it, you know, takes me back. And I don't, you know, I, I guess it's best to wait um, to get the stories out and see how they're, you know, received. But you can't let people like that stop you from creating or you know pursuing your art and your passion um, because then you're just failing yourself and uh, you know I'm not gonna let them do that in ScarJo you know it's hard she's in the limelight she's in the spotlight but she's an actress she's a professional and if she's hired because she has a big pull on her name to sell some tickets um, and she's passionate about the work she's doing, she should do it. Now, let's talk more about comics and uh, another situation that relates to all of this. And this is a comic book writer by the name of Christopher Priest. Uh, he was interviewed and pointing out some issues he has as a comic book writer dealing with the big two companies, Marvel and DC. Um, a, a quote excerpt right here. So I get a call from DC and they want to talk to me about doing a cyborg comic. And I gave them the standard stump pitch. I don't want to be a black writer. When did I become a black writer? I used to be the guy that wrote Spider-Man, Deadpool, Batman. Why am I no longer qualified to write those characters? Um, and he says he's seemingly being typecast after Black Panther. Um, so yeah, I mean, this is similar to that, but kind of in an opposite reaction. The big company is trying to put this African-American writer who's written so many characters, and they're trying to fit him into this small box, saying, oh, yeah, we got a job for you. You can write Black Panther. And you know that the company is doing that because they want to be like, oh, we got a black guy to write Black Panther. And Christopher Priest sees it, he points it out, and he doesn't like any of it. And it's stupid. It's kind of the virtue signaling in the comic industry right now. Oh, we have Iceman. Iceman now is homosexual. So we're going to get a homosexual guy to write Iceman. And after that, tanks and gets canceled a few times, then that writer, is, we don't want him to write anymore. Maybe because he wasn't a good writer in the first place, or maybe for some other reasons, but uh, we want you know these specific per people to write these specific characters. And if you're a good writer, same thing if you're a good actor, you should be able to create, write, act anything and uh, I think that's where ScarJo is coming from that's where Christopher Priest is coming from and that's where I'm coming from uh, people have been doing it for years and right now uh, is 
it's it's a time where uh, people are are fitting these characters, and these these writers and actors into boxes, um, just to check mark them off for their company, um, not because they really care about anything. Uh, they don't care about real good stories. Um, they care about uh, being politi politically correct. Now, I made this video because I wanted to compare those two aspects of writing comics, acting, and uh, what we could do to you know make things better for for stories, stuff like that. I wonder what you guys think. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? Um, do you think ScarJo should shouldn't be playing Black Widow because she's not Russian? I mean, what do you think? Do you think I looked uh, super cute when I was in high school wearing, wearing that uh, Wizard of Oz hat? You tell me in the comments below. Hit that like button button if you want to see me wear that hat more in these videos. Tell me that too. And if you guys haven't subscribed, please subscribe. We're bringing you some awesome content. We just got over 100 subs. Super excited. And a month before we launch uh, Magic Cop, which is uh, which is our our passion. It's our baby. We're putting it out there for you. 88 pages of awesome 1980s super magic flashy fun. Um, head on over to ZadeComics.com or click the Indiegogo link below. It'll take you to our page. You can learn more about it. Sign up for our mailing list and everything to do with Zade Comics. You'll you'll get it right there. Uh, social media is down below. And uh, I've been talking for a while. Thanks for thanks for listening to my rant. And uh, hope to see you next.